I'm Emily Savage from the San Francisco Bay Guardian, and I'm here at City Lights Bookstore to read from Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, um, which has been challenged mainly for its themes of sexuality, drug use, and suicide, and because it makes promiscuous sex look like fun. Outside, in the garden, it was playtime. Naked in the warm June sunshine, six or seven hundred little boys and girls were running with shrill yells over the lawns, or playing ball games, or squatting silently in twos and threes among the flowering shrubs. The roses were in bloom, two nightingales soliloquized in the, in the boscage. The air was drowsy with the murmur of bees and helicopters. The director and his students stood for a short time watching a game of centrifugal bumble puppy. Twenty children were grouped in a circle around a chrome steel tower. A ball thrown up so as to land on the platform at the top of the tower, rolled down into the interior, fell on a rapidly revolving disc, was hurled through one or other of the numerous apertures pierced in the cylindrical casing and had to be caught. Strange, mused the director as they turned away. Strange to think that even in our Ford's day, most games were played without apparatus, than a, more apparatus than a ball or two and a few sticks, and perhaps a bit of netting. Imagine the folly of allowing people to play elaborate games which do nothing, whatever, to increase consumption. It's madness. Nowadays, the controllers won't, improve, won't approve of any new game unless it can be shown that it requires at least as much apparatus as the most complicated of existing games. He interrupted himself. That's a charming little group, he said, pointing. In a little grassy bay between two clumps of Mediterranean heather, two children, a little boy of about seven and a little girl who might have been a year older, were playing very gravely with all the focused attention of scientists intent on a labor of discovery, a rudimentary sexual game. Charming, charming, the DHC repeated sentimentally. Charming, the boys politely agreed. <clears throat> but their smile was rather patronizing. They had put aside childish amusements too recently to be able to watch now without a touch of contempt. Charming? But it was just a pair of kids fooling about. That's, that was all. Just kids. I always think the director was continuing in the same rather maudlin tone when he was interrupted by a loud boohooing. From a neighboring shrubbery emerged a nurse, leading by the hand a small boy, who howled as he went. An anxious-looking little girl trotted at her heels. What's the matter? asked the director. The nurse shrugged her shoulders. Nothing much, she answered. It's just that this little boy seems rather reluctant to join in the ordinary erotic play. I've noticed it once or twice before, and now again today. He started yelling just now. Honestly, put in the anxious little girl. I didn't mean to hurt him or anything, honestly. Of course he didn't, dear, said the nurse reassuringly. And so, she went on, turning back to the director. I'm taking him in to see the assistant superintendent of psychology, just to see if anything is at all abnormal. Quite right, said the director. Take him in. You stay here, little girl, he added, as the, as the nurse moved away with her still howling charge. What's your name? Polly Trotsky. And a very good name, too, said the director. Run away now and see if you can find some other little boy to play with. The child scampered off into the bushes and was lost to sight. Exquisite little creature, said the director, looking after her. Then turning to his students, What I'm going to tell you now, he said, may sound incredible, but then... When you're not accustomed to history, most facts about the past do sound incredible. He let out the most amazing truth. For a very long time period before the time of our Ford, and even for some generations afterwards, erotic play between children had been regarded as abnormal. There was a roar of laughter. And not only abnormal, actually immoral. No! Exclamation mark. And had therefore rig been rigorously suppressed. A look of astonished incredulity appeared on the faces of his listeners. Poor little kids not allowed to amuse themselves? They couldn't believe it. Even adolescents, the DHE was saying, even adolescents like yourselves, not possible. Barring a little surreptitious autoeroticism and homosexuality, absolutely nothing. Nothing? In most cases, till they were over 20 years old. 20 years old, echoed the students in a chorus of disbelief. 20, the director repeated. I told you that you'd find it incredible. 